where both Emmy winning creators slash artists that work in film. Welcome to our 90 Mac life drawing class. This is a free class every Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We do 90 minutes of life drawing together here on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so you get an email notification whenever there's a new class or video. How this works is pretty simple. We do four one minute poses, four two minute poses, four five minute poses, and then five 10 minute poses, and that's it. That's the 90 minute art challenge. Each week is a different topic. When you're done the session, post your sketches on social media and hashtag it 90 min art challenge so everyone can see your sketches. We'll do the same. Also, if I may recommend something for all the artists out there looking to really level up quickly, I highly recommend schoolism.com. I teach on there as well as many of the top artists in the industry. So when you subscribe to Schoolism, you get access to the entire library of courses, over 50 courses in total, as well as access to exclusive live webinars every week. Just sign up at schoolism.com. The 90 Mac Life Drawing class is also brought to you by Lightbox Expo. It's the ultimate event to network and meet the artists and creatives behind your favorite movies, TV shows, animations, illustrations, and games. We expect over 10,000 artists attending this year and hundreds of guests and speakers. This is happening October 14th to 16th, 2022 in Pasadena, California. Lightbox Expo also has a Discord where artists meet to do the 90 Mac life drawing classes together, as well as other fun activities and events. All right, now on to today's life drawing session. All right, and uh, welcome everybody. As you can see, we have a little welcome image there. Uh, why don't we get started? Uh, such a cute little, little puppy dog. All right, so we're gonna get right into the, these things. Uh, first pose is a one minute pose. Oh shoot, I gotta get my timer. I'm so sorry, I didn't uh, get my little timer out. I knew I forgot something. Okay. Three seconds. Uh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> I just got to put that in the corner on the screen and then we'll be ready. Okay, here we go. First one minute pose and uh, yeah, starting now. Also, I mention this every time we start, you know, uh, don't be too concerned about these first uh, drawings or even any of these drawings, really. It's really about the effort that you put in. That's what brings the constant improvements and that's what I always try to concentrate on. All right, so that's the first one minute pose. Here's the second one minute pose. Okay, starting now. Corgis, so cute. Are they considered toy dogs? I think so. They are now.
All right. Nice and simple. Oh my goodness. I love your sketch, Kay. Holy <laughs> smokes. He's All right. Head. I got to bring my A game okay. here. Maybe it's my brush. I got to switch my brush. Switch oh my Yours goodness. Yours was great. Mm. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Ah, sorry. <laughs> He's so happy. He's a happy dog. What, what's that song? <laughs> Anyways. Happy, happy guy. Oh, no, I lost my goodness, that was such a good sketch. I gotta look at that again after. Is that a Christmas sweater he's wearing? Oh, yeah, maybe. Right? Looks like it. Ah. See, I looked at Kay's sketch last time and got me all messed up for this one. I'm like, I gotta do more. And now I got less. <laughs> I give up on that one. Okay, next one is my for reals, for real sketch. Here we go. Are these one minute still? Yes, last one minute pose. Let's just start it. Mm -hmm. Don't you love this subject, honestly? Come on now. This is such That's a good character in this face. It's crazy. Right? Like all these little little uh dogs. So cute. Some of our community members are sharing pictures of their dogs right now in the chat on this book. Oh. Well I actually put in a picture of my um, of Rochelle's dog in here, my wonderful assistant. So y'all can guess in the comments if you like which one you think is Rochelle's dog. In this part, I love the one uh, that has ta a taco costume. <laughs> it's funny. I'm feeling so off, my goodness. <laughs> I can't look at Kate's. I'm gonna crop out her drawings on my screen. This is two minutes? Uh, yes, this is the first two minute pose here. This looks like X's dog. Yeah, X does a lot of the schoolism help desk. If you ever emailed in, um, you would have X or you would have Ashley, most likely. Both equally wonderful people. goodness you're doing color I gotta stop looking stop looking over <laughs> I have learned to switch brushes now too. okay here we go second two-minute pose 
You know, we got to put in one of these guys. So cute, right? So cute. Kind of love this uh, this week's subject matter. Okay. So it's always remind me of Man in Black, the franchise. Oh, yeah, for sure. Such a good one. You know, I got to work on one of those. I got to work oh, really? on uh, Men in Black 3. Awesome. Yeah, there was, a, there was like this Chinese restaurant looking thing in the beginning. It's in the trailers as well, so that was pretty cool. Um, the, the person, uh, you know, this guy Will Smith, you might have heard of him recently. Uh, he goes into the restaurant and then um, finds this giant alien uh, fish kind of thing. And then the alien fish ends up chasing him around, chases him outside, beats him up a little bit. And then in the end, Will, of course, is triumphant. And then uh, and that fish is taken out on like a flatbed truck or something. Has anybody seen that? You guys all know what I'm talking about. If you do, yeah, let me know. Yeah. Doesn't he fight with like the mustard bottles or something? Like I remember something. Like that. Yeah, that was used for all their promos. Yeah, it was used for all their promos. Um, and that fish, I got to design that fish. So that's really neat. Oh, cool. Didn't know they had. Of, yeah, that was really awesome because I got to work with. Um, one of our absolute heroes, uh, Ken Ralston. He he did Star Wars actually. We were just talking about Star Wars. Oh my goodness! Caught talking. <laughs> Trying to do too much. <clears throat> Look at this guy. <laughs> this is the one that I sketched for the uh, thumbnail. Death Bear shells? <laughs> oh, good guess. Bam, wrong. Oh. <laughs> Getting close. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kesat already. Kay knows who the. <laughs> which ones were shells, though. I'm feeling it. I'm going back to my basics here. Like, just lines. I love the little bow on the Characters. So funny. So cute, it you know, still has like that personality. You look at him. All right, first one that's oh, you're so, half so decent. Cute. Yeah, kind of feel like that one's okay. <laughs> Now, how is this not super cute here? Come on.
Yeah, earlier I was mentioning. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's right. So I was just gonna say, like, I feel like this dog watches the game every week. <laughs> Somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> I was mentioning uh, this person named Ken Ralston. He's one of my huge artistic heroes here. Uh, and I was mentioning that he worked on Star Wars, and that's the original Star Wars, back in the day Star Wars, um, you know, in the late 70s and 80s. Uh, and so he was the production designer on Men in Black, Men in Black 3, the one that I worked on. Bigger is better, right, Kate? Hmm? Nothing. Awesome sketch. My goodness. Me too. So fun. Okay, five minute sketches. Here we go. Here's the first one. What a nice pose. These are beautiful dogs. Okay. You know what? Screw it. Let's do some color. I'm gonna pay for it, but uh, let's just do it anyways. I say like, yeah, I'm gonna do color this time. And then I'm like, this thing is practically black and white. Not really much color needed. some of the more rule abiding art friends that you might have might go eh, that's not life drawing life drawing should be with a live model and all this stuff well you know probably very very true but there's still very there's still like just a ton to learn from drawing from photos as well you know there's advantages to both a lot of advantages to both, a lot of challenges to both. But I find it very important to actually do both of them, whether uh, whether you have a life drawing thing in your, in your area or not. Everybody has a mirror, generally. Um, it's important to kind of do things from life because then you have to adjust for exposure, the exposure that you're choosing. Um, but also, it's very important to study from photographs because photographs, you can capture motion, you can capture the smallest little things and really start to investigate. Um, and I'll throw in a third one in, or f another one in there, which is studying from other artists and their interpretations of certain subjects, right? How does so-and-so depict a dog or an environment or whatever the subject might be. And then I'll throw in a fourth one, which is 
it's still very, very important to also sketch out of your own imagination. If you don't do all four, you're missing out. You know, there's potential that you haven't uh, tapped into yet. There's a question on Slido uh, from Anonymous. I want to ask how to draw better proportions. Uh, that's all in your concentration. You know, like what are you concentrating on? Uh, and the order in which you do things. Like you could imagine how much harder it would be to uh, sketch something, sketch a pose starting from somebody's toenail or something like that. Right, that would be like really, really difficult, as opposed to starting off with a line of action, just in to represent the general pose uh, altogether. So you want to think about that, and you want to think about what's the most logical thing to sketch first, second, third, fourth. Um, that's the short answer, I would say. All right, next pose here. Uh, I did also want to mention that I teach a whole course. I used to teach in college life drawing, and now I teach on schoolism.com. I teach a whole course all about sketching. Pretty dog. It's so white. <laughs> yeah. He's a gentleman. It's funny, like the personalities that you sense from just like these pictures of dogs. Like you could almost picture how their personalities are. Like this one definitely doesn't like to be roughed up, <laughs> like rough play, right? So poised. Looks like it's so poised and very gentleman or ladylike. Or I can't tell. <laughs> I can't really tell what I'm looking at there. I think it's a gentleman. It must have like a golden bowl or something to control. Mm -hmm. so. So cute, yeah. Very chic. Thank you. 
next one. Let's go back to five minutes. See, these are the wonderful poses where it's like, yeah, you want a photograph. Especially in the beginning of this race. Thing I keep wondering is it's Rochelle's dog still come? <laughs> or did we miss it? <laughs> Not yet. Maybe this one is maybe this is the one. forget if I mentioned earlier, but uh, we're going to be doing Star Wars as our next uh, our next session next week. So it's going to be movie stills. And since it's May 4th, Star Wars Day, I figured we'd do Star Wars. That'll be really fun. Kay's already done the uh, beautiful little very quick sketch uh, for the thumbnail if you all want to check it out and hit that reminder button definitely looking forward to that it's gonna be cool yeah, yeah. I have a Star Wars story cool. do tell Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so when, when I was a little kid watching Star Wars, I remember like, um, or my dad was like, he told me like, uh, there was a point where I was looking all concerned and stuff. So I'm a little tiny kid. And he goes, hey, what's wrong, son? I go, uh, dad, what happens to us in the future? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, where are we in the future? We're not there, you know, like watching this movie. And he was like, oh, you mean like where are all the uh, Asian people in Star Wars? <laughs> I said, yeah. And he goes, well, Yoda, son. Yoda's Asian. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, if you live to 600 years old, that's what you'll look like. I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. Star Wars is pretty cool. <laughs> that's not a bad thing to have first reference. <laughs> you know, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a funny story. Yeah, and so actually my love of creature design, I feel like the ultimate creature design is actually Yoda. You know, it's like, for me anyways, uh, it's really about like, if, if first you have these amazing characters, you know, amazing designs. And so that's great. Um, beautifully done, this and that. Then you have amazing designs that nobody's ever seen before, some new style or whatever. And you're just like, wow, what an experience. But the top, top level isn't uh, just inspiring or awe-inspiring designs. I feel like they are characters that change your way of thinking in the end. 
right? You leave the movie theater just going, I need to think about everything that I just experienced. Very true. And that was Yoda for me. You know, like... Yeah, but I think that you can also see the proof of that in the Mandalorian show, right? Where Baby Yoda basically is the big star of the show, by far. Like, yes. He's the one who carries the show. Look at how big this little guy's head is, <laughs> right? If you want to do more like a character or a character design, this is probably the one to really go for it, I think. I remember when uh, we were watching the talk on Playgrounds from Justin van der Leck, uh, because he worked on The Mandalorian, that Fervo said uh, that uh, Baby Yoda pays everyone's paycheck because he's so popular. Mm. <laughs> the that's true. Mm -hmm. And they treated him as the star of the show, basically, making sure that's what, what they told the audience. Yeah, well, maybe some people may not know Right, but um, the designer of Baby Yoda is the same designer for BB-8. That's Christian Alsman. Remember when BB-8 came out and there's that remote control BB-8? It was like so popular. Yeah, true. Right, and then like, Baby Yoda comes out and then everybody's heads explodes and they're just like, oh my gosh, so cute. Again, crazy, crazy popular. Same person. Anybody think that this is Rochelle's dog? There's no guesses on this one, huh? Yeah, there was a moment. I was thinking, like, would this be it? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have only one guess, so I'm still waiting. <laughs> I used my guess. <laughs> Out of lives. There's a question from Nicole on Slido. Do you have any dog stories? Does anyone oh, yeah. have any dog stories for us today? Totally. I used to have a dog. I used to have a big German Shepherd named Major that I love more than almost anybody in the world. It's just unconditional love from dogs. How can you not love them back? Um, let me think. I gotta think of a good one. Oh, you know, one time, like, uh, I'm in grade six, I have my dog, and I go to the park with some friends, and then uh, these, these bullies come over, you know, to, like, me and my, my friend riding our bicycles and stuff. We're, we're walking now, because we're at the park. And, uh, and they go like uh, they go to they go to me and they go, um, do you have do you have an older brother or something? I go no, but my dog knows how to attack. And then they go to the other guy and I go, do you have an older brother? And they, the guy goes, no, my friend. And then they took his bike. <laughs> it's a pretty horrible it's little yeah, right. <laughs> And then I, afterwards, I was like, man, you're so dumb. Why would you say that? And he was like, I don't know. It's just innocent, innocent 10-year-old kids. 
they see my survival instincts, right? <laughs> yeah, I had so many good moments, uh, memories with with my childhood dog. just getting into this okay next one oops here we go cute. yeah this one's cute it's kind of a difficult uh, pose there though right mm -hmm. it's not not too used to this kind of pose Brain workout. what are you saying I can't even Speak up. That was brain working. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I love how if they lie on their back sometimes, it almost feels like a human being version of the dog, like, like a Zootopia character or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a better story. I just thought of this other story about my, about dogs. Uh, with my dog, the, you know, the dog I was talking about, Major. Um, so one time I was, uh, I was walking my dog at the local park or whatever. And it was really late, right? It was, it was totally nighttime. And uh, actually it was pitch black where I was walking into because I was walking into the park and there were no lights in the park. And so I'm walking into the darkness, really. And uh, my dog starts to growl at something in the darkness, right? And then I was, I was like, all well, kind of taken back by this because I'm figuring, well, Major, he can see better than I can. Um, so maybe he sees something. So I start staring into the darkness and I think I see two shadow, three shadowy figures, excuse me, three shadowy figures starting to walk towards me, like not even walk, but kind of float towards me, right? And it didn't help that um, this park had these tetherball poles. And so tetherball poles would have these chains attached to the pole that would attach the ball. There's no ball there because it's nighttime and they put that stuff away, but then the chains are still there. So I could hear chains, right? I could hear them clearly rattling or whatever. And I'm looking into the darkness. I think I see these three shadowy figures floating towards me. And my dog is growling at them. And it's like two in the morning or something. Holy smokes. So I start looking and I start backing up. I start... I stop walking forward and I start backing up and my dog sees this and he starts backing up too. Uh, I turn around and I start walking away and Major starts running and then I start running and we both run out of the park. Um, what did we run from? Was it a ghost? Probably not. You know, was it like some wizards or something floating towards us? Probably not. Uh, it was probably just three trees or something that I couldn't really see very clearly out in the distance, right? And, and my dog probably saw the same thing or something. And we both got scared and ran out of there. And I started thinking to myself, like later, why were we scared? Why did we think that we saw something? You know, I started thinking about that a lot and I started to realize, well, it's because there's not a lot of uh, contrast. It's all black. It's all one shade, pretty much. And when there's not a lot of contrast and there's kind of like almost like atmospheric noise and you're trying to sort it out and sort out what is it that I'm actually seeing? your brain starts to put together the pieces of the info that you're getting and tries to make sense of it, right? So it sees a bit of this and a bit of that and like, you know, going probably all the way back to when we were 
hunters and gatherers and stuff, you see a little rustle in the bushes, you see a tiny little hint of something, and then you have to determine whether you should run from it or chase it. And the brain just kind of pieces together what it could piece together and gives you what it thinks it is. In this case, it's like three floating figures. But why does that happen so much more at night than in the day? Because in the day, you have all this information. You have all this contrast. There's no doubt that those are three trees or something like that. Um, and it, at night, I was able to visualize, just naturally visualize better because of the lack of information that I had and the lack of uh, contrast in my vision. Right. So that's when I started to experiment with painting and drawing with less contrast, right? Because that allows me to kind of visualize better and visualize what I want to see um, as opposed to drawing down like the exact thing I you know that's harder uh, it's much easier when you could put down hints of something and then you look into those scratches and you try to imagine more uh, I also noticed that's you know, many of you probably noticed. Let me know in the comments and let me know in the chat if you notice this as well. Um, sometimes, you know, you're drawing, you draw that first, you have this amazing idea first. That's the first step. You have this amazing idea. Then you put down a line and you're like, okay, my amazing idea has just faded by like 30%. You put down another line, it's faded by like 70%. You put down a third line and you can only kind of imagine like 10% of what you originally visualized uh, or your original idea, right? And then by the time it's your seventh line, you you totally can't even see what it was that you were visualizing in the first place that got you to put down those, those, those uh, lines. Right? Like that happens to so many of us. So next time, draw lighter. Draw ghostly kind of details where you can barely see them. And you'll see that you're able to visualize whatever it is that you want to draw better uh, for longer. Yeah, so you see that story actually ended up being uh, something that could hopefully help people with art. Great story. Thank you. Great sketch. Me too. A little less than two minutes left. In fact, there's like a story I've told before in other things 
that when I was working on uh, Alice in Wonderland with Kay and the, the one for Tim Burton, like uh, a while back, um, I had a TV set on my uh, on my desk that I turned off. Uh, you know, it was above my monitor and everything. I never plugged that thing in because it was more like I would stare at that TV and try to imagine the, the movie or the project that I'm working on already on the screen and what does it look like and do I like it and start going through the possibilities, right? And just by looking at a blank, dark screen, it allowed me to visualize things easier, better. Okay, here we go. Next 10 minute pose. shapes. Try this one a little differently.
Do you have any dark stories, kid? I have a lot of wonderful dog moments. I don't know dog stories that's sticking out right now. Okay, we'll probably speak up. Oh, okay. Baby said a lot of dogs that like fell in love with me in the end. And they chose me over their owners. <laughs> <laughs> I love dogs. I just want to spend more time doing the fur. There's some cool like stylization you could do with fur. What a mess. Me too. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Oh. This is the second last uh, 10 minute, or sorry. This is the third 10 minute pose here. So no, third last pose. Cute, looks so wise. Wonder is so quiet, they can't hear me in... Hello? Am I back? Are we? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, it broke off? Oh, yeah, broke off? I was wondering, I was like, oh, I got these calls and stuff. <laughs> oh no. Thank you. So... For letting me know. Did it pause? No, it's just my computer. Like, likes to do some fun things sometimes. 
Yeah. All right. My goodness. Let's get to this. Computers. Settle the logo stash into your soul. What's that? Say this little dog who stares right into your soul if you look at him. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> knows everything that you did wrong and is judging you. <laughs> Have you ever gotten bitten by a dog? Have I ever gotten bit bit by a dog? Uh, I don't think so. Oops. What did I do there? I have once by actually by a little toy dog. Oh. When I was like a kid. I was riding a bike and this lady was walking her dog and so all of a sudden the dog jumped on my leg and just was hanging in my leg with the little teeth. <laughs> but it's such a small bite that you don't even realize it's happening. You're just, wait, what is this dog doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my dog. One time he bit somebody though. Uh huh. You know, uh, but the whole thing was is like my dog. Like, uh, I had a friend over, and we're hanging out in the basement, and then I brought in the dog. The dog did not see the friend, the friend come in with me. Right, and then the friend goes upstairs to go get like a drink or something, and my dog thinks it's an intruder. Naturally. So, nipped him on the butt. Um, he but had to I, take the person to the hospital and stuff. Well, it wasn't serious. It wasn't serious. So it's just like he yelped uh, for a sec, and then he goes, uh, you know, got a shot, of course, just in case. But then otherwise, it's fine. Yeah, that's the thing you keep forget as a kid sometimes. That it's, it's an animal bite, you always have to clean it up correctly, right? Yeah, I'm just in case. Dog, I, I didn't do anything about it, but it got a little bit infectious and stuff. Mm. I got bit by a kid one time. <laughs> what? Yeah, I was, you know, I'm a kid. I'm like 10 or 11. I think I was like maybe 11, I want to say. And uh, there were these kids, these two kids that were picking on one of, like my classmate. That's like this really scrawny crap classmate, couldn't really defend himself. So I was like, that's not right. I jumped in. And then one of these kids grabbed me on the arm and bit me. And I still have a mark today. Uh, on my on my arm where he bit me I should have cleaned that up <laughs> I did it <laughs> maybe that's why I still got the mark who knows This one got a lot of fur. Mm -hmm. It's really fur. 
Is this one Rochelle's dog? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you win. It's like a <laughs> studio photo almost, right? That's what it kind of looks like. Uh, two and a half minutes left. Okay. Two and a half minutes. It's gonna be too much time. So nice. <laughs> well, I, I I feel like this is the only nice drawing that I've attempted so far. Um, I feel like this is one of honestly like one of the worst. Uh, life drawing sessions I've had so far. You're being a bit harsh on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I fight too. Thanks. I really do though. I feel like this is like one of the absolute worst. We feel the same. And I was so confident. I was like, oh, we're going to draw dogs today. But it's relaxing. It's so simple. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but, you know, I'm totally fine with that because it really isn't about the results. And it's really just about, like, showing up, putting in that effort because that's what's going to get us to where we want to go artistically. Everything else doesn't really matter. As hard as that is to kind of, you know, practice and do. All right. That's great, though. Oh, thanks. It's okay, honestly. I was <laughs> like, I need like five more minutes on that. All right. <laughs> Hey, little buddy. Let's do this. Okay. This is the last? No, this is the second last. Is this Rochelle's dog? I don't know. Tell you at the end. Tough one. Tough one, this one. Tough one. <laughs> I think, like, you know, it's really, like, all the other so drawings sweet. today, I've been trying to... Do something with a style, do Me something too. with some design. Then it always ends up realistic in the end. <laughs> well, mine didn't end up realistic in the end. It just ended up incomplete looking or just like scratchy looking. So to redeem myself, I'm just going to do some nice little dog drawings now. I'm 
before I forget, I just want to mention this Saturday, me and the other moderators are hosting a Lord of the Rings themed drawing jam. Yeah. So, kind of casually draw, movie sales, geek out about anything Lord of the Rings. So, if you're listening and it seems fun to you, come to the Lightbox Discord. Welcome to Journey. Can I do a, a good column? Oh, uh, Jonathan does. Oh, I knew somebody. Yeah. <laughs> somebody on our yeah. team can do a good we column. We were actually joking about recreating the scene where I do Samwise Gamgee potatoes and he does the column. <laughs> <laughs> You want to hear a good imitation? Come to the Lightbox Discord and hear Jonathan <laughs> yeah. his column. That's right. really nice. It's really good. Yeah, we actually didn't come here to draw. We just wanted to hear Jonathan uh, do his uh, column. <laughs> column. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I can't do it. I think what will happen is every 10 minutes someone joins and say, can I hear the imitation? So John's will basically be doing the imitation of old Toronto. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But Andy Serkis, the uh, voice actor for Gollum and the mocap actor for Gollum, Wow, he's done so well from that one role. So well. You know, and he's just kind of exploded. Yeah, he found out the apes later and stuff like that. It was amazing. I like called the word keeper. Yeah, and then later they were like, yeah, your face, it's all right, too. Let's put them all in there. <laughs> You're not yeah. an animal now. <laughs> he was also in the Batman. Yeah, he was Alfred in the Batman. Oh, that's true, Yeah, me and Patricia were actually watching the uh, re-watching Lord of the Rings movies with the director's commentary. Oh. And there's a scene with Gollum where uh, Faramir basically beats him up. And then he's lying in the corner and he's talking as Smeagol, being sad. And then the hands start comforting him. So his own hands. <laughs> and apparently it's yeah. meant to be Gollum comforting Smeagol. Which is super amazing. Like I never noticed that subtlety. But... Mm. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I must confess, I never read the books. I only saw the uh, movies. I just looked at the size of the book and I read the first like <laughs> couple sentences. And I was like, "Hell no, I'm not going through this." It's daunting. It's very daunting. Like it's a it's a good read, but there are definitely parts in the book that are hard to get through. Okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to get through like a more challenging fictional book, you know, to get through that. Than it is to get through like a a nonfiction book about like psychology or something. <laughs> Same. And yeah, you have, a, you have a lot of these books these days, like uh, Young Adult Fancy Novels, where they make it as fun as easy to read as possible. But like these adult fancy books, like Lord of the Rings, when the story, like the character is suffering, they don't make it easy on you reading. Like they make it heavy on you as well. Mm. That's actually good, but that makes it hard to get through. Like it's some like they met the sequences in Mordor with Frodo and Sam traveling there. That's just horrible to read, wow. but it's supposed to be horrible. So it's sort of like a weird, weird intent in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Game of Thrones was kind of hard to read too. I had to like take notes. Like, who's this again? This person is calling this person this. Oh, that's their new name because this happened or whatever. It's like so confusing. That's a lot of characters. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's probably just my own deficiencies in reading. <laughs> well, I was geeky enough to even leave read the Silmarillion of the Lord of the Rings, which is like a history book almost, oh. but it's really long. <laughs> oh. 
I've seen a lot of uh, what's it called Harry Potter um, like companion kind of things about like the creatures that live there or like other aspects and stuff yeah it gets a lot of these things get really hardcore just a bit same with Star Wars right there's like all these novels about Star Wars mm. I think once they build a franchise about a world where like if you're a fan you always want to live there in theory <laughs> and then it becomes like an endless product line basically where you're mm-hmm. like whatever you can give us we'll, we'll read it we'll look at it <laughs> okay so since you read the book maybe you know some stuff about lord of the rings like um how come they didn't just get the birds from the beginning to <laughs> just take Frodo <laughs> to the mountain and throw that ring in and then it's done that's the number one the most question. asked question <laughs> oh well, first of all, like you have to understand that the birds aren't really just animals. They're from sort of like these protectors of Middle Earth as well. So it's not like they will just be told to do this and they will actually do it. They're very like, uh, have a mind of their own. Mm. They got and stuff during to do. the books, I think there's a lot of stuff happening in the background where they're actually fighting in different battles, a different part of the war. Oh. But you don't really see that. They were busy. They're busy. <laughs> <laughs> more important than things to do than destroy the ring. <laughs> they were not available at that like, time. Reading somewhere that the sky was uh, manned as well, like with other type of creatures. That's true. So it's also like, like, uh, easy to go through. as well for mortars. So it's not like they can actually just fly. Oh. Mm. It happened later when the eye of Sauron went down. Things broke apart. <laughs> awesome. Good save, good save. Yeah, that's a good save. <laughs> Sometimes I ask about, like, questions about Marvel movies to a friend of mine, and he's yeah. just grasping for straws, you know? It's like, ah, oh, well, yeah, it's because of this, because of that. I'm like, it's not a good save. <laughs> a lot of things. It's like, a, yeah, I think as a fan, you really don't want the illusion to break. Your life. Yeah. I'm sure there is a good explanation, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were out of orbit. <laughs> yeah, for me, That's the whole Marvel stuff was like, why didn't Doctor Strange just open up a portal and chop you know, his hand off? Chop Thanos' hand off. <laughs> I had the same. Right? Thing. And it's like the whole thing would have been done. Well, then there wouldn't be a film. <laughs> there wouldn't be story that's like the meme yeah but the best is when everything just seems so realistic and you're just like yeah i don't know how they could have got out of there uh, could you yeah. know yeah but that's the tough thing about the marvel movie, right, right if you have so many different characters so many different abilities powers yeah like i'm sure you miss something right as a writer it was almost impossible to, to figure that out ahead of time it's even hard to set it up, right? Like all those characters, you gotta write it's crazy. moments for them. No excuse. It's already hard. <laughs> I want my Spider Man or whatever. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, this one is done. Let's go to the last pose here. Yes, this is Rochelle's dog. Yay! <laughs> oh, such a cute. Such a cute. It's a stuffed toy. Oh my gosh. Looks very uh, nice and obedient, you know? Nice and obedient. Looks like it's like, you know, like the dog is really paying attention. Doesn't it? Mm hmm. Maybe the dog is trying to trick her, like, see, I'm obedient, but you don't know what I'm about to do next. That's also mm-hmm. different. It's lovely. Yeah, this is probably a good time to say, hey, tag us with your drawings when you're done, Kay and I. And then we always love to share 
share a few in our social media and everything. Yeah, I missed it last week. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, too much stuff to do. Also, when this uh, stream is over, don't forget to go over to the uh, Star Wars one for next week and then hit the Add Reminder button. Beautiful picture, Kay. You've seen the thumbnail. Oh, thanks, Patricia. Nice. So nice. good. I actually wanted to redo it. Oh, I thought you were talking about your little sketch right there already. It's looking so good. I oh. see what you're talking about. Thanks. It's too. It's adorable little eyes. I'm gonna copy you. I'm gonna make my nose a little bit bigger. With uh, Lord of the Rings, there was this movie about uh, Tolkien's life. And it was really, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, just amazing to see what kind of interpretations of his own life he brought in the books and about the war. And it was really, really cool. Awesome. That's a good one with the guy who plays uh, Beast and X Men, like the young guy. Oh, yeah. Okay, you watched I cried that, that movie. It was what? too emotional. I thought you watched that, Kate. What, what was The one, uh, Tolkien? Oh yes, I did. I did. <laughs> so much movies. That's a good one. Yeah, for me, when I saw that movie, I saw him with his three friends, it suddenly made me realize that maybe the four hobbits are based on him as his friends. <laughs> and then that's what he thinks. Come so. back from the war, like in, the, in his oh, real life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And certainly, then the whole emotional arc behind the Lord of the Rings is certainly more heavy all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, it's so relatable to being an artist, right? You have a band of friends that you like collaborate yeah. with. But then the end is kind of tragic. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of friends that to collaborate with and stuff, if you are lacking that in your lives and you would like to kind of uh, meet other fellow artists and everything, check out the Lightbox Expo Discord. You can see the uh, address in on the. I believe the bottom of the screen. And there we have tons of artists uh, from all over the world chatting, hanging out, learning from each other, all that great stuff. Definitely. We have a lot of amazing community members. There's a question on Slido. Um, next week topic, uh, it, it will be Star Wars. Sandra was uh, worried because uh, on the bottom, on the left side, it says toy dogs, but it will be oh. Star Wars. Oh. Um, <laughs> I knew I forgot the something. The other question was, what magma brushes are you both using and which sizes? I'm using default. Just I'm using default right now, and then I've been trying some of the the pencil, the pencil brushes, and the I don't know the other textured brushes. I just actually discovered them today, <laughs> <laughs> a couple of minutes ago before everything started. Yeah, I'm using the one labeled ink. <clears throat> 
it's one of the default brushes there. It's pretty much the general hard edged uh, circle brush in Photoshop. It's, it's very similar. Yeah, somehow the default brush, it just feels so good and direct. Right, you could go like full opaque. Mm -hmm. I like the default brush for sketching, mm -hmm. as long as like... For life drawing it works well. Yeah. Unless it's something like specifically textural, like uh, sketching trees definitely gets easier when you're using like a custom brush. Um, right. Right, just for that texture. This is the last 10 minute pose, by the way. I'm thinking maybe we just go for a couple extra minutes on this one. Sure. Since this is the very last one. Your dog is just so cute. Doesn't it make you want to get a dog, Bobby? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. I just don't want to have, have to take care of the dog. I, I like it's a big babysitting, or, you know, pet sitting. It's great. But there's so many benefits having a pet. It lowers your blood sugar or your <laughs> blood pressure. Sorry. <laughs> It probably they, depends on the pet, too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, but all they want to do is love you. That's true. Got a message from Rochelle that, Rochelle that I was cheating because apparently her dog is in a profile picture. Well, we'll just keep going a little bit longer here. Oh, that looks so cute. Yeah. Adorable. Yeah. Poor baby.
much more time you think you would want on this one? Oh, doesn't matter. You can end it whenever. Whenever. Yeah, just. All right. How about one choice. more? One more minute. Whatever we could get down. One more minute. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what I, what else I have on my uh, schedule today. I feel like it's kind of a packed day in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, good. Yeah. Whatever you are. All right. Well, I guess that's good. We're good now. <laughs> we good. Yeah. Thank you so much for everybody who showed up, did the sketches. Don't forget to post your stuff with the hashtag 90 Men Art Challenge so we can all see them. Uh, tune in next week, same time, same channel, and we'll be doing Star Wars on Star Wars Day. Uh, Saturday, of course, Lightbox Expo Discord. You can join in for the Lord of the Rings drawing jam. I, I hope I can make it as well. And uh, yeah, that's everything, everybody. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you to everybody that showed up. Thank you to the Mod Squad. Thank you, Mods. Thank you to Patricia and Nell for helping out as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for the image, Rochelle. Very cute dog. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. Bye, Have a guys. great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right, we're done. Thank you.